want to talk to you. Hey, you got some beefs. Murph a call at 312-644-6767. That's 312-644-6767. And tell him what's beefing you in the world of sports. What's Your Beef is brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering and Brown's Chicken.com. Oh, so many beefs, so little time. A lot of beefs at Brown's lunchtime, 24 minutes after 12. You're out and about driving around. You're hungry. Hey, right up ahead on the left, there's a Brown's chicken. But how about lunch? When's the last time you've had a real Italian beef? You've always heard about it. Real Italian uh, sausage. These are the way they make them in Chicago. Brown's went to a lot of research some years ago. Went to all the great Italian beefs, Italian sausages, the purveyors, the little shops, little stores. They waited, worked on it, waited, worked on it. I'm telling you, they not only have it right, they have it the way your dad, your grandpa, your great-grandpa, when they talked to you in the old days about those Italian beefs, and you can dip them, you can have them dry. Mm -mm. Lunchtime at Brown's. But let's go to the phone lines. The best beefs win a trip to Browns from a little old Murph. Let's go to uh, Howard's in Skokie to lead us off. Hello, Howard. Murph, good afternoon. Uh, my, yeah. my beef is the Hall of Fame voters. And yes, I'm not sir. sure if they all live in New York or just on the East Coast. But anyone who watched baseball between the 70s and the 80s yeah. know when the guy's fourth leading in strikeouts in the history of baseball and had 60 shutouts, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Jack Morris was the most dominating pitcher of his era, and Andre Dawson all three not voted in the Hall of Fame. Here's my beef. Do away with the votes. Say, if you're not from New York, you don't belong in the Hall of Fame because you didn't, we didn't get to see you enough because we went to sleep too early. Close it. I love that. You know, Howard, you're exactly right. I don't have the solution. I don't know if that, but I like your angle. You know, ban the East Coast voters. But seriously, I don't have the answer. I, I doubt if there is an answer. But they have to, I'll just say this. They got to do something because right now, it's it's an overall farce from top to bottom. Here's the answer. Let ex-players vote again for players in their era. Having sports writers who have a different agenda. Alan Trammell, I could argue, could be in the Hall of Fame. Look at his numbers. Yeah, you could. But, but it's ridiculous how Morris was the most dominating pitcher when there was a three World Series. Ace on three staffs to go to the World Series. Toronto, Minnesota, Detroit wins it there. Forget the 91 yeah. game. Bly Levin was there a better oh, yeah. pitcher? Oh, yeah. Well, Bly Levin. Let me leave you with this, Howard. I'm always uh, astounded that no consideration is given to the defense of a player. Now, you look at Andre Dawson and you look at Jim Rice. And you know what? Not because Andre Dawson played in Chicago. I'm looking at this objectively. If I could take one or the other, I would take... I See, he was tucked up against that green monster. You know, oh, well, he didn't have to field. And Andre Dawson was a 5 a player. Doesn't that mean anything compared to, to, to Jim Rice? Of course. Uh, Jim... But it doesn't. Jim Cott wins 16 gold gloves as a pitcher. Yeah, now you can argue go. as a pitcher, but 280 mm -hmm. some wins. What do you need to do, or do you only have to play good. in New York? Howard, always good to hear from you. Thanks for getting Thank me rolling, buddy. Appreciate it very much. Six four four six seven six seven. What's your beef, my friends? At Browns, want to send you over to visit them. Let's go to Chris in Addison. Hello, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me on. Hi, right, Chris. What's your beef? You know, Joe Kim Noah, he, uh, he comes in the game last night. The Bulls are pressing. Now, Chris, i got to stop you. This is not tool of the week. You have to give me a concept. So if you want to talk lazy players, attitude, he, go ahead, he please. He does not deserve to be in an NBA unit. Oh, I appreciate it, Mr. Concept. But we get the impression. Every time I go to uh, my dentist, I hear Dr. Stein tell someone i got to make an impression. I go, hey, make an impression on the dentist. Let's go to uh, Dan's and Donner's Grove. Hello, Dan. Hey, good afternoon, Murph. Hey, what's your beef? My beef is with the uh, uh, eloquent Steve Stone. He likes. Hold to... on, hold on. Tool of the week is on Friday. Let's go to uh, Will from the South Side. Hello, Will. Yeah. Hey, what's your beef, buddy? First off, I want to say I love this show. I listen oh. to y'all every day. Oh, well, thank you. You're trying to get a Browns out of me, and I don't blame you. I want to get a Browns out of me also. What's your That's beef, Browns, bro? Man. <laughs> My beef is with the whole Chicago Bulls organization. Mm -hmm. It's sad that we got so many lazy players that don't want to work with a talented rookie that 
been coming. I'm so glad we got Derrick Rose on our team, but I'm also sad that Derrick Rose is a rookie and he's actually our true captain. Well, you know, Will, the, the money is always going to be there. I'm always of this impression, Will. The, the guy that dogs it, he probably would have dogged it back in the old days when the money was, uh, you know, less. Or he's, he'd be dogging it in the future when the money's more. I don't know if I really ever buy into What do you think? Do you think the money changes the guy or was the guy already going to be like that either way? I think the money changing them, but I also think that the players around, too. The chemistry of the team, uh -huh. it's, it's like a downfall. It's, it's, it's like the whole team is yeah. just trash. Yeah. Trade everybody but Derrick Rose. Hey, back up the truck. Back up the truck. Thank you, Will. All right. <laughs> All right, buddy. I got so many beefs. I hope I have time to get to my beefs. You? You have plenty of time to get to the best beefs. But when you think Browns, you want to think more than just Italian beefs, Italian sausage, lunchtime. Oh, by the way, my favorite, Maxwell Street Polish. But here's the thing. You got the gang, all your buddies coming over this weekend to watch the big NFL games. The big games are coming up. I know our hometown guys aren't in it, but you know what? Your hometown favorite, it's local and it's Browns and it tastes better. Go to brownschicken.com and check out all the different great party packs they have. And uh, you know what? Invite your friends over this weekend and then go to brownschicken.com and see what they have to feed everybody. Phone them, set it up credit card. It's waiting for you. They'll deliver to the reservations. Lunchtime today and the big party over the weekend at your place from brownschicken.com. It tastes better. What's your beef score, heads? Murph is waiting to hear from you. The beef lines are now open at 312-644-6767. Only on WSCR. The score. Oh, right, let's get back to the phone line. Final round of what's your beef phone calls. And by the way, you know what I'm thinking with this storm that might be coming in, uh, this blizzard. Uh, you know, hey, we got enough blizzards around here. How about this? On your way home, stop at Brown's tonight, pick up dinner, the great chicken, pick up the mustard choli. Why don't you say, hey, honey, I'm bringing dinner home tonight. And since it's going to snow tomorrow also, they're saying, here's a tip. I, I can say this. I don't know. I've never read it or heard it anywhere. But Brown's chicken somehow is best. It, it holds over to tomorrow better than any of their competitors. I'm telling you, I used to try them all. Then I found out years ago, Browns put it in the refrigerator, and tomorrow I say, tomorrow! It's unbelievable. Pick up a, a lot of Browns tonight on the way home. You might be snowed in. Tomorrow, let's go next to uh, Southside. Tom is on the score for What's Your Beef. Hello, Tom. Hello, Murph. How are you today? Oh, fine. Thanks for hanging in there. What's your beef? Look, this kid at Florida State, Mr. Rold, who's a, the uh, Rhodes Scholar, a football player there, yeah. uh, He's, go, he's he decided to take the Rhodes Scholarship. He's now, finished. is this tool of the week, cause, uh, no, or is it a no, concept? No, it's not about him, the tool of the week. Uh, give me the concept, then. Go okay. ahead, buddy. Okay, he, he decided to go there and spend a year yeah. to get his master's mm -hmm. degree and mm -hmm. come back and play football later, like Bill Bradley. His teammates, meanwhile, complain... Okay, because see. he was late for the football game, uh -huh. and then he's got other people <laughs> in the area complaining that he ought to go and enter the football draft. So the definition: what is a student athlete? That's what you're. Yeah. That's what you're bringing me over to, right. Tom. He's supposed to be a student athlete. So which he is it? Personifies student athlete. <laughs> but maybe yes. But you know what? Sometimes when when you're the uh, you're the out of step, Charlie. Everyone thinks that you're wrong. Evidently, the student athlete is no longer hyphenated, but it's separated. That's that's right. But this kid, he, he, he may become the greatest brain surgeon in the world, but I think he, he made the right decision by doing what he's doing. And he can still play national football and get drafted in the football league. You would think so. Hey, nice job. Hang on, Tom. I'm sending that over to Brown. Nice job, buddy. Athlete. There's a little chair sitting in the corner. Yeah, but Murph, they, you know, the athlete, the, the college football players, they shouldn't get paid. No, why not? Well, you know, they get a free education. You know, let me run this one by you. The free education means putting another chair in the chemistry class. What does it cost a university? Think about this. You never hear this side of it. What, what does it cost a college, a university, to put an extra chair in the study hall and let the kids sit there for four years? Nothing. Nothing. 
there's no out-of-pocket expense, at least the way I look at it, for a university or a college to put another chair in the classroom and say, you know what, we're giving you free education. True. But what's, what's it off, off of their books? Let's go to uh, Bethany in Rockford. Hello, Bethany. Bethany, you've been holding. Okay. Yeah, I, my beat today is with another Chicago radio station who actually had a serious conversation on how the Bears should pursue Michael Vick in the offseason. Now, I don't know about you, Murph, but I'm not sure I could... I could hang in there for that. Well, and you know, the Bears, as an organization, yeah. don't they try to keep people like Michael Vick who have records out of their organization? Well, all I know is that uh, Carol Slezak wrote the same column in the Sun Times. I can't uh, hear all the other radio stations, nor do I wish to critique positively or negatively uh, they uh, them. But let me just ask you this, Bethany: Why would anyone think this was a good idea? That's my question. That's my beef. I don't, I don't understand how anyone <laughs> could think that's a, that's a positive well, thing for this team. You and I agree. You know what that means? You're going to Browns. Hang on, Bethany. Thanks for calling. Hook up Bethany in Rockford. Next time she heads into Chicago. There's 50 locations, Bethany. You're going to love it. Let's go to Leslie on the north side of Chicago. Hello, Leslie. This is Lizard, Mike. Yes, how are you doing, sir? How you doing, Murph? Oh, I'm fine. What's your beef? Oh, my beef is with the Chicago Basketball Club. The Chicago Basketball over there on the near west side? Oh, yeah, that organization. <laughs> You're not even going to give them credit to saying their name, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> well, give me more about the beef. Why are, is management taking so long to bring back the architect? They caused this mess to come on back and clean it up again. Mr. Jerry Krause? Oh, that's who I'm speaking of. <laughs> Go on. I like your angle. Continue. I mean, he's the one that broke this organization apart. Mm -hmm. He sent them all on their way. He put another general manager in that chair. He couldn't get this job done. So why don't you bring him back to clean up the mess that he first started? Well, you know what? Uh, it's, an inter it's a very I I'm sort of with you on this one, Leslie. Uh, uh, in fact... Uh, you know, Mr. Krause has a very good approval rating, which is interesting. I took a survey here, a uh, text question uh, last week, sir, and uh, I said, uh, who is the better GM as of right now, Mr. Paxson or, or Mr. Jerry Krause? And I had a 94% vote for Jerry Krause. But that being said, Eddie Curry, that was the beginning of a long domino effect. Uh, which then bring, you know, forces the next guy to bring in Ben Wallace. So they're both very much, uh, you can point your fingers at both these guys. Uh, I, I'm quite sure you even agree with that. Oh, I do agree with it. But you point more, more at the first guy, right? Yeah, more at the first one <laughs> because he's the one that broke up the championship. Hey, I like your angle. I like everybody's angle because everybody loves Browns. Go visit my friends at Browns, all right? Hang on, buddy. Everybody's going to Browns, but you know what? If you have a big HVAC mechanical system, sophisticated HVAC, you want to go visit thetowngroup.com. Now, these are my guys for the big projects. They do it right. Thetowngroup.com. North Town, Southwest Town, West Town, Northwest Town, white trucks, red stripes. You see them flying around town. Thetowngroup.com. Let's go next to... Petey on the south side. Is that you, Petey? Hey, Mike. How you doing? It's actually Pete. I don't know why you put Petey, but uh, that's all right. How you doing, Mike? I'm fine, Pete. What's uh, your beef? My, my beef is with the Chicago sports media. Uh-huh. Probably specifically the print media. All right. All right. We finally have a, a winter sports team in this city that is young. Mm -hmm. They're hardworking. Yeah. They're earning their money, you know, very, you know, they work hard for what they do. They have a great coach. They, their organization is back on the right track. You're not talking about the Bulls, are you? No, I'm talking about the <laughs> other, I'm talking about the other team that occupies that. The West, the West Side Hockey Club. You got it. All right. All right. <clears throat> but yet this Chicago print media, on days that the Bulls and the Hawks play together, at the same time, I constantly have to see mm -hmm. a picture of the Bulls on the back page of the Sun Times. These these no good, you know, selfish um, players that the Bulls have. They 
keep shoving them down our throats. Who cares about the Bulls? We have finally have a winning team in this city, and they keep shoving the Bulls down our throats. You know, Pete, uh, I agree with you, but I would have to, uh, with full disclosure, I did a segment myself for an hour yesterday about how bad the Bulls are and the uh, myriad problems they I have internally. It. However, I would also like to let the record show that I'm very proud to have been doing a lot of uh, Blackhawk talk no, this Mark, year. I said print media. Oh, I know, I know. Not you. Well, I know, but I wanted to, you know, you know, I wanted to be fair that I did the sort of print thing yesterday with the Bulls. But see, the newspaper industry right now is in a, a state of panic. Yes. And. Uh, I believe that they aren't seeing clearly or thinking clearly right now because of the panic uh, uh, which they are in, engulfed in. Well, the Internet has taken over a big part of that. Well, we know, know that. Yeah, we know right. that. But the, the, the point is they're in panic mode for good reason. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I, I think that they are looking to sell the papers through negativity, which sometimes works. Let's not kid ourselves. But I thought, for instance, when the Milton Bradley signing and the Chicago Sun-Times, first of all, they had to be, put the full picture of him, you know, with his uh, Royd Ray Jack five right. years ago. Right. And then uh, I would still believe assigned their three inside uh, pieces, one by uh, DeLuca, one by, uh, let me think now, one by DeLuca, one by Greg Couch, and one by Gordon Wittenmeyer, the Cubs beat report. All three came out. How will this ever work for three years it was negative 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 which i believe this pete you can disagree with me okay. i believe that in 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 any sport the fan wants to buy the paper listen to the radio during the off season positive even preseason positive you know if it, 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 it is don't the you know the don't send smoke up my my hiney but you know what i didn't see the upside for the sun times i think most cub fans wanted to buy the paper and read good things about bradley hey if he's self-destruct in june and the team's 10 under and he gets suspended then go all after hey, mike, him not, hey mike not to get off topic but where did mark DeRosa come from before he came to the cubs well, he came from the Rangers. The Rangers, right. Right, sure. And he had a great year, and everybody said, oh, it was because of the bad. No, not everybody. Probably just our expert here. Hang on, you're doing the bronze. It tastes better. Right. Pete on the south side. The way to his stomach through Murph's heart. Final round of beefers coming up right after this, but you'll have no beefs except those delicious ones at Brown's. Lunchtime beefs and Brown's. An Italian sausage, an Italian beef. Right now, stop in, and when you put it together, you call it a combo. And that's the favorite of Brown's president, Frank Portillo. Me, little Murph, I love the Maxwell Street Polish. Little yellow mustard, mm, grilled onions. You can't even find Maxwell Street anymore. They moved it. But Brown's has it. It's the score. Head him up, head him up, boom, man. Move him on, head him up, raw hide. Head him on, cut him out. Right Home stretch, what's your beef? Lots to cover in the one o'clock hour. Eddie Farmer said he'll phone in sometime, maybe around 1.30. Maybe he'll keep the Ranger around also. Talk a little White Sox baseball trade rumors in the paper. And who doesn't love a good hot stove trade rumor when it's going to be about, uh, well, the temperature they're saying, what, the hometown of Elvis? Too below? Is that what, uh... Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> never claimed that it was. Let's get back to the phone line and see what you're beefing about today. Let's hey, Murph, to... hey, Murph, what's your beef? Steve, I'm very busy, man. I just, oh. just want to know your beef. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to... My... I'll tell you, one of my beefs... Thanks for asking, Steve Goblin. The Benny the Bull blimp. Benny the Bull blimp? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You ever been to the Blackhawk game? You look up in the rafters, seen them? There's the Bull's Benny the Bull blimp. That they have, to, I guess there's, they can't deflate them, even though the bulls are themselves deflated. They can't like bring them, so they hide them. This big goofy, bit of the bull. That's actually, I like the blimp. I just don't like looking at it during a Blackhawk game. If I'm John McDonough, Jay Blunk, now this might not be politically correct. Probably wouldn't be safe. You know what I did? I get a rifle. I'd shoot that thing down out there. Boom, 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 boom. Let's go to uh, Lonesome George in Skokie. Hello, George. Hey, Mike. Happy New Year continuing. Hey, George. Thank you. What's your beef? I'd like to shoot down that Benny the Bull blimp, I'm telling you. Hey, you got some anger management, I think, Mike. Yeah, no, no. That was, that was either McDonough or Blunt coming from their booth over good. Nice shooting, guys. Yeah. Nice shooting. What's your beef, George? Well, I've got a beef. I've got a conundrum, a mystery, an enigma. 
and I'm not sure what the solution is. Mm-hmm. Why is it in football, and football only, yeah. that first round, the four best teams mm-hmm. in football mm-hmm. don't play a game? It doesn't happen in baseball. It doesn't happen in basketball. But you'd think the four best records in football, they'd play the first round because they're the best. Well, you know, uh, it is a sport of attrition and injuries, so somewhere along the line, it probably was not misguided. It was probably well-guided that, uh, you know, it made sense. Now, it appears statistically that's making less and less st- sense because for whatever reason, those teams are struggling after their uh, 14 days off, right? Yeah, and if things go screwy this coming week, <laughs> uh-huh. two wild card teams might get into the Super Bowl. Oh, now that would be screwy. The enigmatic Lonesome George with another enigma for us. Thank you, George. Have a good one. All right, buddy. Final couple beefers. Let's go to the beef lines. Hey, Murph, and, you have yeah. another beef? Oh, I, Steve, I sure do. Thanks for asking. Deadlines. Deadlines? Yeah. False deadlines. False deadlines. Yeah, see, I fell for it. They bamboozled me. They suckered me. They snookered me again. They uh, made off to me, you know? What's his name? Barry Madoff. They scammed me. I fell for it last week. Zell's people said, well, by Thursday, January, what, 15th, we're going to have that new purchaser of the Cubs announced. We're going to announce the sale. I fell for it. The false deadline. Did you see the Tribune business section today? Cubs bidding will now head into extra innings. They're going to hold this thing up. Of course, as well they ought to. They're trying to squeeze every penny out. I have no problem with that. I have a problem with me falling for it. The false deadline ruse. They made off to me. Let's go to uh, Craig's at Aurora. Hey, Craig. Hey, Murph. How are you? I'm fine, Craig. Browns wants to know what your beef is, buddy. I tell you, I'm, I'm sick and tired of the major leagues, you know, baseball. You know, with all these major market teams. And, yeah. You know, trying to buy a World Series. I understand, you know, I'm not... I may come across as being jealous, but in mm-hmm. the revenue sharing and all that. But what are these what are these teams doing with that money? Well, here, know, like, here's the dilemma. Every uh, uh, the NFL, see their television, and, and you raise a complex but very uh, interesting and timely, I might add, Craig. Got question? The NFL, each of the 32 teams divides the TV money equally into one 32nd uh, of a piece, other than the preseason, which is nothing, you know. But baseball, with all their games, uh, they are unable to do that other than the national packages, the, you know, national games on the weekend. Or, uh, so the dilemma is, the bigger the market, the more revenue you're going to uh, bring in from TV. Uh, they have never opted to split that up. I'm against salary caps. But I'm fully in, in favor of dividing up TV revenue, which would really put teams more on equal a footing. But then there'd be owners that would pocket the money, so you'd have to make sure they didn't do that also. You know what I mean I about know, that, Craig? I, I know what you mean. And Murphy, you know what? You <laughs> yeah. know what? It was yeah. a pleasant surprise seeing Tampa Bay last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, those damn Yankees, you know. Oh, hey, I'm going to write a New York stage play and go back to 1955 and produce damn Yankees. <laughs> you and me, Craig, will split the dough. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. And my final beefer of the day. You won't be beefing if you go to bronze. Remember the word value. With the economy the way it is right now, you want value. You got value when you go to Browns. Value for lunch, value for dinner. And value for that big party you're having this weekend. Invite everybody over to go to brownschicken.com. Did I mention the gourmet chicken sandwiches? Mm. Who doesn't love chicken and bacon, right? Chris is at Crystal Lake. Chris, very alliterative. Hello, Chris. Yeah, my, Murph, my, thanks for my call. My yeah. beef is with Chicago Media. Uh-huh. And I got a props to go with this. Right. My beef is that only today is the first time that somebody started piling on about this crappy Bulls team that we've been putting out on there watching day in and day out just getting beat by horrible teams and it's about time that Lawrence Holmes finally started this revolution with the Chicago media and the fans to pile on John Paxson and get him out of Chicago a revelation and a revolution I appreciate it Chris thank you buddy a high five there for Lawrence Holmes hey Chris miss a little miss a lot I did that uh, for an hour yesterday myself we've been piling on here at the score want to thank everyone for participating what's your beef and the best Italian beefs in town. You know where they are, my friends, at brownschicken.com.
participate in What's Your Beef? Join Murph for another edition of What's Your Beef? What's Your Beef has been brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering and Brown's Chicken Chicken.com. Winners of the Mike Murphy Show are only eligible to win prizes once in a 60-day period.